Welcome everyone to another episode of Unravel Your Mind. We're here to help transform relationships to love and to life. And I'm so happy that you're here. If you're watching live, please feel free to write questions in the comments. If you're watching on replay, you can do the same and I'll be sure to answer them in next week's show. So I have a question for all of you at the very end of today's show. So I hope you'll stay tuned to the end. I need your help on something. And yeah, I'm excited about all the questions we have today. There's going to be some stuff on Vax. I know it's such an old topic. At least it feels like old to me. Um, a lot about uncoupling and a lot about the awakening journey. So all topics that um, I love to talk about and some that have some similarities. So I think that there's some themes coming through and I'm excited to go through each one of the questions individually and see what comes through. So let's jump right in. Question number one is, and I've got to put my glasses on because I can't see. How do you Question number one, how do you recommend asking a new love interest if they are vaccinated? I don't want to come across as judgy, but it's important for me to know. I get it. Um, it's a tough subject because there's so much around this topic that I think it can bring a real sense of like, you're making a judgment about me immediately just simply by asking. So what I would do is come at it from a little bit more of a higher level perspective and it's a new love interest. So I would simply start out by, Hey, COVID was such an interesting phenomenon for all of us. What was your experience as far as like the number one takeaway that you got from it? Right? So you're asking for like, what pearl of wisdom did you glean from the whole COVID pandemic? Then you can easily say, do you have a belief around or experiences around vaccinations so that you're really just easing into it and you're starting to understand like what is their belief system and what is the programs that they're subscribing to and where is their level of fear? So you're actually going to learn a lot more than just like the vaccination question because I think that, yeah, it's like who wants to ask those questions anymore? And honestly, who wants to answer them anymore? Right. But they are, are they are important to many people, um, whether which side you're on. Um, and so I think just coming at it from a more like I want to learn more about you and I want to learn more about what you think about topics from a much broader perspective will just naturally guide you and, and lead you right into that question. So let me know, know if that helps in the chat. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And I'm happy to elaborate more if necessary. Okay, the next question is being able to tune into our higher self or heart is so critical to living our life in alignment and therefore out of suffering. What are some of your favorite and most reliable ways to do that? Um, yeah, actually, there's a couple of things. Um, when you're talking about um, higher self or heart. In some ways, I kind of see them different, but they are in a sense the same because I think that when we're really in our higher self, we're coming through our heart and not in our mind. And I think that's where, where you're headed with all of this. You know, how do we stay in our heart center and how do we stay out of the ego mind? And one of the first things that comes to mind is so simple. If you have a pet, I happen to have a dog, Miss Lily. And the way that I get into my heart is immediately just go over to her and give her a little kiss and a snuggle and just to feel into the warmth and the love that comes so unconditionally from our pets. Um, it's such an easy way to just drop into our heart. And another way that, you know, if you don't have a pet or, or you're not around your pet and you're feeling like you just really want to be in that heart space and, and you want to know how to get there quick, I would say this. Take a deep breath in and feel it going all the way in and all the way down to your tailbone, like your sit bone. And if you can be sitting while you're doing it, even better. But if not, it's okay. And it's so basic. Breath is so basic. And I know this is something that you already know, but it's something that can really ground you fast into being in your body. Like when you actually focus on the air coming in through your nostrils, 
feeling the air crossing all of the little hairs in your nostril, and then actually feeling your chest opening. Then you start to bring your awareness down to your chest area and into your heart, right? So you want to just be in that space of feeling there. And maybe it's even like putting your hand right here and just feeling what that feels like to be in this space, because it, what it does is it takes you out of that mental space. So those would be some tips that I would say are really helpful to make that connection. Now there's other things that you could take advantage of like heart math. Um, it's a great meditation technique and, and that also gets you in sync because you want to get really into the, the, um, the rhythm of your heart and the energy of your heart. And there's some data and science that's coming to mind, but I can't actually quote the, the actual article or the study, but they looked at the electromagnetic field of the heart and how the heart actually anticipates things that are coming in like the immediate future. And it's kind of like that fight or flight idea. And so our heart is really um, a great determining factor for assessing intuitively things that are coming. It's like, and we talk about it a lot, I think as a gut feeling. And I think that is a similar thing, but it is actually coming more from your microbiome and your gut. And you're just like, oh, I feel that gut feeling. But when we can get the gut and the, and the heart together um, in our intuition and our feeling and our centered place, right, to be here. Um, but most of the times we're here and we're thinking because we get rewarded for that, that thought-based system of if then thinking, if I do this, then where what we're really wanting to do is to revert back to more of our innate inner wisdom that is there that provides that gut feeling that comes also through the heart that says, this is, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. And sometimes we have to navigate that and we have to kind of go around it in a different way. And it's not always like a straight line. Like it's not always that we do one thing and then, and then we can just stay on that line. It means like, well, I made that decision and that decision got me to here. And now I need to go this way. And then I need to go this way. And it's only the societal programming that's going to judge you to say, oh, you're lost or, oh, you don't know what you're doing. No, you know what you're doing. You're following your heart and you're really following that feeling that, where you're feeling open, right? There's another thing that comes to mind that's a little bit off of this topic, but it was a conversation that I was having with someone where they said, I just feel like my heart is closed. And that is the case for so many people because we get programmed to close our heart early on. So what you're asking about is in some ways an easy task. And in other ways, it's like no small task because we have practiced for so long keeping our heart closed and not being vulnerable and not letting people see, you know, our, our heart on our sleeve. And, and so we're moving back to that time where we want to be in the heart center space. We want to be in that intuitive risk taking space. We don't want to be just in the head space. We want to use our mind. We want to use our ego mind. It's a beautiful thing. It, it has a program in it that, makes us not have to relearn some things. So we're not discounting the mind. We're saying, let's just get the mind in the back seat and the soul in the driver's seat. And the soul exists in your fourth chakra and your third chakra, right? Your soul exists here. You know, your solar plexus is where you really reside. And that's where you want to come back to is that place. And so it's, it's really doing a lot of deprogramming. Um, if you really want to be in this heart centered connection, it's not something oftentimes that you can just like wake up one day and, and, it, and it's there. It is always there. Don't get me wrong, but because of the programs that we've instilled and we've learned and we've exercised over the years, that's where the work comes in. So it's available to all of us all the time. It's just doing the work to continue to open, 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 and to be able to walk out in the world with an open heart and not necessarily have it on our sleeve in the sense that that others can just, you know, come and crush us. No, that's not the point either. So hopefully I've answered that question about um, the higher self of the heart, because then you're listening to the wisdom from your your inner wisdom, your higher self in your heart, right? Not your mind. So hopefully those tips were helpful. If not, um, I'm happy to add more. You can give me some information in the chat and I'll be happy to to share. Okay, let's move on to the next question. 
A week ago, I rekindled with a previous boyfriend. Our connection and love is really intense. And I've always known it wasn't good for me. But we have such we have so much fun when we're together, and I believe we deeply love we we deeply care for one another. And then it goes all sideways and becomes emotionally torturous. He makes comments about things like snide remarks about crystals. I know he's not my guy, but why can't I let him go? Um, well, there's lots of things here. And let's just take it again from a little bit higher perspective that he's one of those devils that's actually an angel in your life. And what happens for a lot of us lightworkers, way showers, is we do have deep love, deep caring, and soul contracts with individuals. And we want to help pull them through, pull them up. And we're always lending a hand, lending a hand. And we're getting something out of it too, of course. It's not about us like trying to heal someone else. That's a part of it. But it's also that, you know, we get grounded, we get seen, we get, we get this feeling of being in communion with someone else. And so there's, there's that benefit because we have this soul connection to someone, but it's when do you let the hand go, right? When do you let that person do their journey? Because you're not going to pull them up and they're going to continue to try to pull you down. So that's really the push pull I feel in this situation. And I also feel that this person is in your life to get at a much deeper core wound than what it looks like on the surface. I don't think it's just about like, you can't get over this relationship. I think that there's probably a really deep core wound of abandonment in there. And that this person is kind of going for the jugular in a sense, like on a spiritual soul level and, and really just creating, because sometimes we don't pay attention until our heart's broken or we're in deep, deep heartache, right? So we call these characters in to get us to pay attention and to get us to go deeper into the biggest wounds that we carry in our heart. And at the end of the day, it's always going to be for all of us really bringing ourselves back to that core wound of separation from source, which doesn't actually exist. <laughs> it's a made up idea, but somehow we lose our way, not realizing that we're always connected to source. And then we experience a connection with others, especially in intimate love that we think is, ah, oh, this is my Holy grail. This is like my person. And while people can be our person from a support perspective, they're not ever going to be like the person because we are the person. We are the first marriage, the first love, our connection to who we are. Then we share that with someone else. And when that other person either isn't ready for us or we're still deep in a wound and we're there to learn a lesson, those are all things that contribute to why there's this volatile um, you know, energy between the two of you. And it's a really deep core lesson. And the only thing you can worry about, uh, not even, I don't mean worry, like the only thing that you can work with is you. Forget about working with them because then you're in a real hamster wheel of wanting to get validation from someone who has no desire to actually validate you because that's not serving their purpose and it's not serving the soul contract that the two of you signed up for. I know you know this and I know that you're working on this and I just want you to know that you're not alone on this because this is a theme that's happening for a lot of light workers, a lot of empaths that we are attracting these beautiful souls <laughs> that are torturous because they're not where we are vibrationally. Okay. So there's a lot there. And I think the next question coming up is, is somewhat similar. And I almost tried to put them together. And then I said, no, I'm going to answer them separately because they they're definitely from two separate people. They just happen to have a lot of similarity. So let's go into the next question, which will go just a little bit deeper, maybe in a different way. 
um, with another struggle around heartbreak and, and partners. Okay, so the next question. I've been broken up with my boyfriend for over a year. In a recent tarot card reading, it came up that he was going to come back and apologize for not acknowledging my gifts. Honestly, I'm really over it. I'm over it all and would prefer to not hear from him. Interestingly, now that this seed is planted, I feel like thoughts about him are circulating. Not about getting back together. It's just that he's in my awareness and I'd prefer not to refresh, no, not to rehash any past loops. What's going on? Okay, so don't ignore this. Um, it doesn't feel nice. Don't over accentuate it. There are thought loops that are going on about this relationship. It was a test. Um, whether it was a, a group tarot card reading or something very specific to you, it doesn't really matter. It was a test to see, have you healed all the wounds and karmic lessons from this previous partnership? And if you got charged in any way, don't beat yourself up about it. Just have the awareness and go, hmm, okay, it's still there. There's still something there. It doesn't mean that you go into the story of, oh, it's still love. You know, we need to no. You need to just go into you and realize, oh, okay, I want to get rid of the residual. So maybe the next question is, is how do I get rid of the residual? <laughs> and it can be difficult, but number one is you can't ignore it. You cannot ignore that you still have a soul connection or an entanglement or someone's on your life cord. So don't ignore it, number one. Number two, you really want to acknowledge the connection that you want to still have with that person because it's a fantasy. It's a fantasy. I know sometimes that's a hard pill to swallow, but it's not, it's not reality. It's a fantasy of what you want that person to be for you, because if they were that you would be together. <laughs> it's that simple, right? But it's that complicated all at the same time, because we don't want to let go of these fantasies that we build and create in our minds. Number three, it's the basics. You got to just let go. Now, letting go is like one of those things you go, I'm letting go, but it's still there. I like to do a lot of meditation. I like to do where, where I'm actually just transcending the mind. I'm asking for guidance. I'm connecting to the light. That's one really great way. If your mind's super active, sometimes mine is so active. I'm just like, oh, I can't, I can't actually... I can't actually get to the light in this moment because I'm just so yeah, caught in the spin of these thoughts. And then I really like to do meditations by, by other people. I've got a couple that I really, really like. And if, if you want them, put a little comment here and I'll send you the link to some of these meditations of some really incredible high vibrational people that do some wonderful cord removal, um, negative energy clearing. And not that we have to say that previous partners are negative or bad. It's just that their vibration is oftentimes at a very different level than ours. And so their vibration has a tendency to pull us down into a heavierness where we're then listening to the mind as opposed to transcending and working through all of these, these ideas that are coming through the mind that are stored at a cellular level, right? So they're in our, they're, it's actually in our body and we want to release it. So that's why I'm saying, don't ignore it. There's work to be done. There's somatic clearing that can be done. If you if this sounds of interest, I've got some, some really great people I can help you out with. Um, somatic is, you know, really feeling into the body, going back in and retraining yourself, similar to the question we had earlier about the heart. And, and being in your body and being in touch with the emotions and the energy of which you hold in your body. Really interesting story that just um, came to mind to share. I was living in Bali. This was several years ago um, when I had this situation happen. And I went to a high priestess. And before we went into the temple, um, she did an energetic uh, drawing of you. 
And basically what she did is she drew on a piece of paper. It looked like a hangman, actually. That's that's kind of what the image was, right? And then she had her hand and she just started going like this and over the top of the body that was sort of hanging there. And, and, um, and she just by, you could tell she wasn't thinking that she was just like using this energy, right? And she's just going along, going along. And then um, I was watching my, you know, she was doing mine. And I'm like, oh boy. And she didn't speak any English. So she actually couldn't tell me, but I knew exactly what she was saying. I had lots of heaviness at the time over the, over the head, you know, like I was totally stuck in my mind and my thoughts and, and yeah, that, that was really big. And then big over my abdomen, right? Like just holding on to a lot in my digestive system. So point of me bringing that up, I guess, is to simply share, to become more sensitive to your energy system. And one of the ways you can do that is through some chakra clearing meditations. I have a dear friend that has some really great meditations. So again, if you're interested, put it in the comments and I'll send you her, her very wonderful links to, to actually do the whole chakra um, clearing and get grounded and then bring the energy up, right? And up through your, your crown chakra. Um, that's also a really great way to just get to like, where is the emotion, right? Where is that feeling? Um, another thing that comes to mind, another tip on this might be that if you have someone that you feel relatively comfortable with, so it can be a stranger in a safe space, but I, it's, it's probably better to have someone that you actually know, um, and ask them if they'll do some soul gazing with you. And when you do soul gazing, you're just simply sitting and breathing, maybe breathing in sync a little bit with each other. And then we just did this exercise. It reminded me last night um, of how powerful this can be. You breathe with each other and you keep eye contact. You keep the soul gazing. And again, when I lived in Bali, we did this a lot in different groups. And we did it with strangers, but it was in a safe space. It was with a group of people that we knew were all there for a similar, a similar purpose of, of awakening and, you know, and really being in the healing aspect of things. So, um, that will help you feel seen and it'll help bring you into your body. And you'll also start to feel, you know, like, where's the numbness? Like, where's my awareness? Where's my consciousness? Can I feel my toes? Can I bring, can I bring love into my body? Can I feel in my heart? So if you're with a guide, a guide, it's even better because they can kind of help walk you through some of that, but it's a great technique to really just get in and, exchange energy with someone else um, in a safe space. So I know I digressed a little bit off of the, the question, but I actually think as, as I'm saying it, it's such a full circle loop because the whole point is about connection. We want to be in connection with other humans. And when we have intimate connection with someone in a, in a sexual relationship, a partnership, that connection is so beautiful oftentimes. I'm assuming in this one, I get the feeling that there's a beauty in that, um, in that sharing. And when people can soul share, it's, a, it's an incredible experience. But what happens is if they haven't done the work, when they get out of the bedroom, they're not able to see things in the way that you are or experience things in the way that you do. And that's where we have to make these tough decisions that that connection and intimacy can be also felt and experienced with others in a level of intimacy that has nothing to do with sexual relations. And that's what we want. As humans, we want connection with others. And the way that we get connection with others is being in love with ourselves and being vulnerable to show that love to someone else without fear of being rejected. That's the key right there. And somewhere along the line, most of us get taught rejection. We get taught rejection for our love. I mean, I think honestly, probably the most like tender area of our life as humans is in junior high. Like everything gets programmed around love with our parents, right? Like how they love us and how they show us love. And then those first loves in junior high. Oh, I can still remember mine. And 
they're so innocent. And it's like the first time that you have this experience with someone else. And so again, I digress a little bit, but it all ties together that we're looking for that connection and we're looking for that innocence. But somewhere back in junior high, somebody broke your heart. Somebody dumped you. <laughs> you dumped somebody else. And if you never got dumped, um, when you got dumped as an adult, it hurt even more because you had no toolbox or skill set to know how to deal with it. It's wacky, this love thing. But as you know, it's always about self-love. So we got to come back to that and do the work. And I know you are. So do the inner work to experience your love within you. And then you have the luxury of being able to soul share it with someone else and attract someone who can do the same in the external world, not just in the bedroom. All right. Great questions. I think it's time to go on to the next one. I'm going to see here. I always get this sun that's like wanting to just overtake me. Nope. It's not going to work there either. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next question and see what we've got. Okay. So I love this. We've got a lot of guy questions here. I've been dating a guy for about six months and I feel really close with him. I'm spending more time with him, which is a commitment because we don't live in the same state. I'm not an absolute yes to him being my guy, but I'm thinking of moving in with him and trying it out. Do you think this is a good idea? No, I don't. <laughs> um, I'll tell you why. On one hand, I can see like the exploration aspect of it. Oh, let's live together. Let's see how we cohabitate. Let's see how it works. It sounds great, but I guarantee you that what you're going to do is build a really tight life cord connection. There's a possibility of codependency. There's a possibility of building a life of which you don't know yet that you want. And once we do that, it is so much more difficult to make changes, to get out of situations. I don't mean get out like you're running away. I mean, like just difficult to start a whole new life, make a whole new set of friends because you start making friends with them, your couple, you, you really, so it's not that I'm against like living together. It's that you want to be a hell yes. Cause if you're not a hell yes now, you're living in the potential of what you think it could be. And that's not a good space. Honestly, it's not a good space because the potential that we fall in love with men is simply potential. It very rarely actualizes. Okay. Right now there's a lot of awakening happening. It's possible. But if you don't know that it's a hell yes right now, then living together is going to create on the back end of all of this. If it doesn't work out or it's not your guy, it's going to be torturous in a sense to get out. I'm not, look, you can do whatever you want. I'm not going to judge whether you do or you don't. Uh, you asked the question and I would say absolutely not until you know for sure that on all levels that you guys have really, really talked about this and you really feel like you're, a match that you want to be in partnership for the future, then no, no. Then that I feel like you're just wanting to, I don't know. You're just wanting to feel comfortable. And that's not, that's not a good place. You don't want to just feel comfortable. You want to know that this person is your person. Keep dating them. There's nothing wrong with that. Keep going long distance. Um, move to the town and get your own place. Build your friends, he can have his friends, and then you can have your friends together. But you move somewhere and it's that person that is your lifeline for your friend, your best friend, your lover, your social circle. You know, you put it all in one basket. It's not healthy for anybody. It, it's, it just screams codependency all over the place. That's my thought. I don't know. It feels like a little bit of tough love, but it's just the honest the honest information that comes through for me to share with you on that. All right, let's go to the next question. Okay. 
I've recently been reflecting on how intuitive I was when I was younger. I feel like some of my spiritual power is coming back online. Is there a way to accelerate this? I'm not even sure what I'm asking, but it feels like I'm supposed to do something more. Ooh, juicy. I love it. You know what? You are. It's not, it's not about more, though. It's about the awakening of our inner wisdom. We come into this world and we are super intuitive. Our little bodies and our little souls are, are just like, mm, like one juicy nugget in there. And our mother's womb and, you know, and we're just like coming out and, and then we're learning, learning, learning how to not be so intuitive. Learning how to not cry when we're sad. Learning how to not love because we fear heartbreak. And so coming back around to your intuitive gifts is just remembering who you really are. And that is such a beautiful thing. And right now, right now, it is happening at lightning speed. And it's not feeling great for a lot of people, but we're moving through it fast. People are moving through this faster. And again, we don't have to label fast as good or bad. We want to be in the magic of how we can quickly transcend ideas and programs that were beliefs that we're programmed with. Everything is a belief until we unravel our mind enough to get back to oneness, the ultimate reality of oneness. Everything's program, a belief, some beliefs feel like they're serving our good and we want to keep them. And some beliefs feel like eh, they're dragging us down and they're, they're limiting us. What our goal is, if there's a goal, what our, yeah, I guess let's just, our vision, our goal, our purpose is to remember who we are, right? And to transcend the programs of which we came in to this lifetime to experience. So we've selected everything. We've said, okay, Let's go in with this, 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 this. And then we spend our whole life trying to undo the programs at a certain age. So I'm assuming that this person is at a certain point in their life and it doesn't have to be a physical age, but a certain life stage where they're waking up and they're like, okay, there's something more. And there is something so much more. And it's so exciting when you actually get to that place. And sometimes, you know, for me, that came with the awakening kiss at 30,000 feet. Um, I don't know if you've seen my book, but Angels, Herpes, and Psychedelics, Unraveling the Mind to Unveil Illusions. On the back, it says, a kiss at 30,000 feet changed my life. And when that awakening happened, I couldn't deny it. And honestly, it wasn't about the kiss and it wasn't about the person. The kiss and the person played an instrumental role in helping me to break through my beliefs. But they were just characters in my play that I put in to help me to, to really remember who I really am. And so now's the time for everyone to be remembering who they really are, because when you do life gets easier. Okay. It gets, you know, it's like this. Sometimes there's like, ah, what do you mean? Um, what do you mean? I feel like a unicorn. What do you mean? Nobody else sees what I'm seeing right now. Um, but when we do, we tap into our inner wisdom, right? And that's where we go inward and all the answers are there for us individually. And we stop looking externally for approval, for someone else to say that we're worth it or that we're whatever, like whatever the labels are, it doesn't matter. See, I can't even think of any labels right now. It's a good thing. Um, we really want to start stepping out of this. And, and as we do, oftentimes what happens is new people come in, some people go out, that can be scary. It can feel scary, especially when it's someone in our close inner circle, like a partner or a spouse. I'm not saying you have to leave your partner or spouse. Not everybody does. I did, but it, you don't have to. And I'm not encouraging that necessarily. It's something only you know inside you. Is that person ready to walk this journey with me, to ascend this journey with me? Or is that person really wanting to just stay where they are and keep me there. It's really uh, the most important question that you'll ask yourself because who you surround yourself with makes all the difference in life. It really does. 
So it's a beautiful time. If you're getting any of those nudges, anyone listening, if you're getting the nudge that there's something more, maybe just forget about the word more and just know that there is an expanded state of consciousness of which you are already part of and you're just remembering the power and the wisdom of who you are and it's deep within you and it's available to you at all times. So, yay. All right. I love it. I'd love to hear any comments that you have in regards to that, that question, whether it's your question or just someone reacting to the question. I always love to hear what comes through for you too. Okay. Let's go on to the next question. I'm a guy in my early 40s. I'm single and super lonely. My therapist encourages me to go out on the weekends, listen to live music, and make conversation with as many people as I can. I go to a bar at least one night every weekend, but I still struggle. How can I overcome these heavy feelings of loneliness? Well, first of all, know that you're not alone in the loneliness. Uh, it's a pandemic right now. If you haven't noticed anybody out there, like loneliness is in like massive waves. And even for some of the most enlightened, because it's a collective consciousness that we are all part of. So even if you're the happiest mother, you know what, on the planet, which Axel talks about and taught me, and I talk about him, my Course in Miracles teacher in Angels, Herpes, and Psychedelics, um, even if you are that happiest mofo, there's still the wave, right? And so we're building our toolboxes so that when the waves come, we can, we can come back to a blissfully neutral state a little bit quicker. We don't have to focus on time. However, when we sit in the suffering, we start to program and imprint our brains with the feelings of the loneliness. So that's why it is important to build the toolbox and to get ourselves out of the, the cesspool of this idea of loneliness sooner. Now, a couple of things about this. Loneliness is all to do with you wanting a connection. So oftentimes we think it's about a connection with another person and that's great and we can do that and I'm gonna talk about that but it's also about a connection to ourself, who we are. And thirdly, it's a connection to who we are connected to the ultimate reality of oneness, connected to our higher self, connected to something so much bigger than us, but we're part of it. So, there's a couple of things here to talk about. And when it comes to being connected to other people, there's some really basic stuff you can do. Okay, I get going to the bar. It's a fun place, dancing, live music, things are happening, energy, right? Lifts your mood. But there's also something about that that can be really lonely too. It doesn't have to be, it can go either way. But it, you mentioned that you were still struggling a little bit here. So I would recommend that you look for an event that's maybe a sound healing or maybe it's a yoga class or maybe it's some place where people are more mindful. Maybe it's a kirtan. Even if you don't sing, you just go to be in the vibration of the kirtan because the vibration of which these groups will bring you is not about just the Let's just, uh, you know, go be part of a group and feel like we're part of a group when we know we're really not part of that group. Like, you know, you may have a couple people, you know, but it may not be your friends. But when you go to like a kirtan or these other more spiritually inclined groups, everyone there is holding a space wanting everyone to feel connected. It's the nature of these of these groups. And even though we still feel like we're separate the energy of the kirtan, the spirit in the room that is moving with the sound of the singing and the energy, the spirit in the room that is moving through the sound of the bowls, I guarantee you that is there for your highest good. 
that's there for you to remember who you are. That's there for you to allow the healing to take place, for the vibration to enter your body and to move through you in a way that maybe makes you laugh, cry, or scream at the top of your lungs. I don't know. It depends upon what you're dealing with, right? And so you want to experience yourself from this internal perspective at an event like a mindfulness thing versus an external thing. You can still do the external things. Dancing is great. Being in your body and dancing is great. It's how you perceive yourself on the dance floor. Oh, do I have good enough moves? Um, is there somebody sexier than me? You know, like whatever the questions are that are come in your head, that's what you don't need to do. What you do need to do is just feel like, man, I just, I feel the rhythm of that beat. You know, like whatever it is, if you're going to do a lot of music, like I feel the rhythm within me of which I'm expressing outward and I don't care what I look like. Right. I mean, it makes me think of like Elaine on Seinfeld, like such a silly example, but yeah. And it makes me think of, okay, this is a really, oh, great idea. Um, a static dance. So if you know of a static dance and you feel like it's a safe space, um, I highly recommend it. Oh my gosh. I love to do this in Bali because in Bali, it was like always full of like really high vibe people, or at least people who were on the journey and, and there was no judgment. It's not like you're at a nightclub and you're like, Oh, look at how silly they look. No, not at all. It's you go there. Um, if they're intentional, ecstatic dances, right? You go there to just like move your body and just shake it out. And it doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't nothing. Like it doesn't matter what you wear. You're just going to be in flow and everybody has that same intention. And you're just ecstatic about dancing. That would be a really awesome thing for you. And the traditional ecstatic dancing that I'm familiar with, there's no talking. There is no talking on the dance floor because this is not a mind thing. This is just an experience. You can make eye contact with people. You can, in some, some static dance, you can touch others um, and some you can't find one that works for you. I think that really feels so right. Um, and I don't know of any, yeah, I don't know of any website I can lead you to, but just Google it in your area and you'll find something that's, that's really in line. So if you're not in an area that has more spiritually inclined people or services, then just go online. There's so many people doing such great content on YouTube, right? Great content. And they will walk you through it. Um, there's breath work also. Um, I have this beautiful practitioner in Costa Rica that I met while I was there and I tap into her Instagram and she offers so many free, incredible, incredible services. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments and I will definitely connect you to a link for her. Um, yeah, so loneliness. Okay, so that was more about the human body, the, the connection to others. Then it was about connecting to yourself, which was some of the breath work and the static dance, right? And then connecting to the collective consciousness, an idea that comes to mind there when you're at that place and space is considering if you have a safe set and setting that you may want to experience some plant-based medicines. Um, I talk a lot about a lot of these, so I'm not going to go into it right here on this video. You can look at my psychedelics playlist um, on YouTube, but there's a lot of really incredible things that you can do to connect to, to your higher self, to the collective consciousness. Again, I'm always going to say in a safe set and setting, I am not uh, someone, a proponent of recreational. Um, I, I, if it's, if it's your thing, that's your thing. That's totally fine. Um, it's just not something that I feel is, is, uh, yeah, something I want to endorse and I have a guide. So if you go to bethbell.me, you can get the psychedelic resource guide. And I list in there so many great pearls of wisdom, things I've learned, tips, tools, you know, especially before you go to um, a ceremony and things after, because integration work is the most important thing. So, um, so many resources available. All right. Hopefully that answers your question. I totally get loneliness and we are all in this together. And there's so many things we can do to just keep stepping through and being okay with being alone. When we love ourselves deeply, that love can exude and shine through even when we're sitting 
in the beauty of our own space by ourselves. And that's the place to get to. Okay, let's go to the next question. Okay. I like to think that I'm a nice guy and believe that I demonstrate that consistently. However, there is uh, there is a pit of anger that loops. Okay, let me start over. I don't know. I guess I can't read. Uh, I like to think that I'm a nice guy and believe that I demonstrate that consistently. However, there is a pit of anger that keeps surfacing. My mind races and I don't like what I experience. Thoughts on how to clear this? Um <clears throat> Yeah, there's a lot of things. I think um, how weirdly I want to say this and just please listen to the whole thing before you start judging what I'm saying. Trump is here to help bring the underbelly up, whether it's the underbelly in you and the anger you have about past experiences or crap that's happened in your life or if it's about the collective, there are energies and programs and ancestral lineage of things that are bubbling forward. I'm, I, I'm not a proponent of Trump. I'm not agreeing with how he does anything that he does. But what I'm telling you is he is providing a template for people to A, believe in themselves and communicate it in a way that resonates for you. And hopefully that this is speaking to light workers, not to the people that just want to, you know, spew out the underbelly. I'm saying light workers, cause that's who typically watches my channel. People on the awakening journey, take that template. He studied with Norman Vincent Peale and he knows how to believe in yourself and how to make the impossible possible. He's a master manifester. We don't agree with how he does it. And that's okay. Well, I don't. Um, but learn from him, right? So learn from him how to really believe in yourself. So that's one. And number two, it just, it, it just flew out of my mind. Um, <laughs> I got so distracted by the particular topic. Um, Number two, honor that you've identified there's something deep within you instead of ignoring it or not wanting to show your ugly side of being angry. Embrace it. Welcome it. Because the only way is through it. If you shove it down, which is what's been happening, and that's what he's here to help bring up, is we're not shoving this shit down anymore. It's got to come up and out and we've got to offer it back to the light. Whatever it is, whatever your anger is anchored in, get to it, figure out what it is, really figure it out because it's not going to go away on its own. And when you hold it in your body, when you keep it in there, that's what creates disease. That's what creates dis-ease in your body, mentally, physically, spiritually, it holds you back from ascending because you keep going back to that thought, right? You keep going back to, ooh, that anger. You keep going back to, ooh, that person, that thing that happened to me. Like there are really terrible things that happen to people, really terrible things. And to clear that can take years, if not decades. It doesn't have to, but oftentimes it does because it's something that was ingrained so deep. It hit us so hard. It, hit, it just went in so deep. And if we didn't bring it up and deal with it right then, the years that we just compacted it, compacted it, compacted it, holds a heaviness. And when we take, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years to hold something so tightly, sometimes it takes another 10, 20 years to unravel it. But again, it doesn't have to. And this is also another place where a lot of psychedelics um, can come in and can be helpful. 
uh, to really get to that because we put things into our subconscious mind and we don't want to access it. And somewhere the key got thrown away and we're like, I don't even know how to get to what that is, but I feel it. And in a safe set and setting, there's tons of, um, of data now on, on MDMA. I, we're hoping and praying that in 2024 that will become available and be really a, a resource for, for vets and for anyone who's suffered from PTSD. Um, there's also, I'm sure, going to be a lot of off-label usage. Um, there already is in the underground. Um, you'll have to look and see in your, in your um, state and country the legal status and, and the safest way for you to be able to partake in this if it speaks to you. But there's also that. It really helps. Stuff comes forward. I've seen it time and time again with so many that things in their childhood that they just didn't even know was there repressed a lot of sexual abuse from people, a lot of, a lot of um, emotional abuse, a lot of physical abuse, you know, that happened that they didn't realize until they were able to really get beyond the conscious mind and into that subconscious programs that were running their life and, and derailing their life and, and creating a lot of suffering for them. So doing the work, is always the way. And you'll get there. Uh, don't ignore it. I think we've just covered off on several tips. Don't ignore it. Jump in on it. Um, welcome it and move through it and use some tools and techniques and, and put those tools in your toolbox with pride because you'll need them again. And sometimes you'll need to offer them to others. And that's why it's so important on this awakening journey that we are building our toolbox because there's a lot of other people that are going to need our tools and we're going to be here and ready to serve because we've done the work and we know what the tools are and we know how to use the tools. So uh, rest assured, there is so much coming for you to be in service to others. All right. I think we are coming down. Yes, we're coming down to the hour. Um, I think there's a few more questions, but um, we'll get to them next week. And I just wanted to have a couple of um, reminders, and also I wanted to ask uh, I wanted to ask a question. If you've been watching any part of the show, maybe just some of the segments, or you're watching the whole shows, uh, I am in a little bit of a quandary about the headliner for the show. I've been calling it "Unravel Your Mind" because we're ultimately unraveling programs, but we're also awakening inner wisdom, and we're awakening through love and through an expansion of consciousness. So there's an idea that the show could be all about awakening inner wisdom, uh, transforming lon loneliness to love, or another option could be that it's to transform heartache and loneliness to love. And while some of the questions aren't technically about heartache or heartbreak, they are always about questions that that weigh on our heart because they're things we want to overcome, they're things we want to answer, things we want to move through. So I'd be curious if you have an opinion on which one you think would resonate for you and which one you think would resonate for uh, a broader group of people and possibly changing the name of the show. So. I appreciate all of your questions. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for staying with me. Please comment below, um, provide your questions for next week, and I'll be sure to, to answer them. So thank you so much. I wish you so much bliss.